Now we're going to look at a particularly powerful feature of the Java Servlet API that's called a filter. We're going to look at what filters allow us to do and how we can create them, what they're used for. What is a filter? It's new in the Servlet 2.3 specification and therefore available to us in the Servlet 2.5 version of the specification. It was originally part of the J2EE 1.3 specification, included in the 1.4 specification, and available to us in the current Java EE 5 specification. Application servers have provided this particular feature in the past, but not in a standardized way. So the use of servlet filters allows us to replace uh, what we used to rudiment to really create um, something called servlet chaining or chaining servlets together, having one servlet call another servlet where the logic needs to mod be modified uh, throughout the normal history or the normal process of a request response chain. A servlet filter is a small amount of code that can execute before and or after serving up a web resource. A servlet filter does not create its own response, but it can manipulate a servlet request or a servlet response. Filters follow what's called the decorator design pattern. It dynamically extends the servlet behavior without adding servlet code or necessarily extending the servlet source code. Many filters can be applied to the request for a single web resource. Why use a filter? A filter can perform application tasks orthogonal to the usual operation of the servlet, in other words, addressing cross-cutting concerns. Moving a task from a servlet to a filter gives us the ability to reuse this filter without rebuilding the application. Servlet filters are applied by uh, mastering configuration settings rather than changing Java code, the original Java source code to which the filter would be applied. By using the filter interface, we can implement a task as a filter, allowing us to enable or disable the task without rebuilding the entire application. Some of the uses for applying filtering to our web application, some business uses. Um, for example, if we want to count the number of new registrations, if we want to log customer orders, each customer's order, if we want to audit access to sensitive resources. These are the kind of business uses that are really outside the logic of our application. Within our application, there are also some interesting uses for filters, even within the logic of our application code itself. We can apply an XSL transformation to the response, an XML style sheet language transformation to the response. We can perform authentication. We can do custom access control. We can email system administrators on every application error. We could compress the response to reduce overall bandwidth, making our application appear to perform better. What are some of the features of using filters? Filters, by their nature, can be chained together. They have initialization parameters, so behavior can be parameterized and controlled through the deployment descriptor. As a matter of fact, the same deployment descriptor that's used by servlets. Filters have access to the servlet requests, so they can manipulate the headers. They can add objects to the request in the form of attributes. They can add objects to the session. Filters also have access to the same servlet context that the rest of your application artifacts, your servlets and JSPs, have access to as well. You can send messages to the servlet log. You can obtain other resources, such as files, that are served through the same application context. So what does the filter interface look like in Java? You can see that it is actually declared as an interface in the Java language in the same package as our servlet. The filter interface provides us a couple of methods, not the least of which is its own initialization method, which of course is called when the filter is called by the application server, called into service. 
the real meat of the work or the logic of our filter can be provided by overriding the do filter method. The do filter method from the filter interface provides us the servlet request object, the servlet response object, and something called the filter chain. The filter chain gives us a handle to the um, order of filters that are applied to a particular resource without actually knowing what the order is. The do filter method um, and the init method both throw exceptions, so we have to be careful of how we handle those. The do filter interface also provides us with a destroy method, which if we choose to implement, uh, will be called by the application server when the filter is being taken out of service. So that's the filter interface in a nutshell. So how is it that a filter works? How can it be applied to our application? The deployment descriptor, the WebXML, declares that a filter should be invoked for a particular servlet. Before the container then invokes a servlet, it applies the filters. It applies all the filters that are associated with a particular servlet. For each filter, the web container would invoke the init method if you've overridden it, the do filter method certainly because this is what gets injected to a common request response chain, and the destroy method if you've implemented it if the filter is being taken out of service. Within the filter class, you should call the do filter method on the chain object that is passed into the do filter method to ensure that any remaining filters are invoked without you, in writing your filter code, knowing whether or not other filters are applied. The filter decides whether its own processing should come before or after the rest of the filters by controlling the order or the processing order of when the do filter method is actually called on the chain object. So how does the application server determine in what order to apply filters to a specific web resource such as a servlet or a JSP? The order in which filters are applied is actually the order in which the filter mapping declarations that match a particular request URI for a servlet, the order in which they appear in the filter mapping list. The documentation for how um, filter mapping occurs and the order in which filter mapping occurs is shown here on a link which you can investigate if you choose to. In other words, what order of filters are applied is determined by the order of the actual filter mapping element tags in the web deployment descriptor or the web XML. So if we're going to write filter code, what might it look like? So here we'll look at a very simple filter, a simple logging example of our filter. A couple of import statements to accommodate exception handling. Our class is defined to implement the filter interface. We create a private variable for filter config of type filter config that we can use within our class. And then we see a simple implementation of the init method on the servlet filter, which copies the local passed in filter config to the private variable filter config um, as referenced by using the this object. And the this object is just a reference to the caller, um, the instance of the caller. The bulk of the work for filters is done by implementing the do filter method. The do filter method in this implementation receives from the interface a servlet request object, a servlet response object, and an object called filter chain, which represents the chain of filters without knowing whether or not there are other filters in the chain. This simple implementation, what we're doing here is using the servlet context log to simply print out hello, and then the next line to uh, call filter, chain .do filter is a call out to the server saying, OK, I'm done with this filter. You execute other filters, or if there are no other filters in the chain, then this application server would simply grab the resource that was being requested. 
We can also provide a destroy method, and all this implementation does is set the local this filter config, set it to null so that the object instance is flagged in the application server for uh, garbage collection in Java. Good practice. And that's uh, the closing block of our very simple logging filter. So how do we configure this filter within our application? Each filter is declared in WebXML or the deployment descriptor using a filter tag. Filter is a direct child of the root tag or the root element web app, which is the root element in our WebXML. Using the filter element requires at least a filter name and filter class, and filter class is a fully qualified uh, class name, and it points to the class that we've created that implements the filter interface. Filter name must be a valid Java identifier. In other words, can't start with numbers. Anything you can use to um, create variables in Java. A display name a description and initialization parameters are available, but they're optional. It's not required that we use any of these. Why we would use initialization parameters is for the same reason we would use them in initializing a servlet to store parameter values external to the source code stored, in other words, in WebXML. Let's take a look at creating a simple filter within our web application and applying it to any request. So let's use Eclipse to create a very simple filter and uh, assure that we know how to configure it and we know how to apply it to any web application resource. By right-clicking on the Simple Web Project and choosing New, I see that one of the options that's available to me is something called a filter. That's exactly what I want to create. Um, I'm going to create a separate package for organization of my code, make it easier to understand, easier to read, make it uh, so that it makes more sense to me and to my fellow team members. So I'll actually create a Java package specifically for my filters. The class name is going to be, uh, we'll just call it demonstrate, oops, um, simple filter. Okay. We're not extending any other Java class, so we're not defining a super class. What we're doing is um, implementing an interface, and so we'll see in following screens how the code uh, or how the tool helps us stub out our skeleton code. We're not defining any initialization parameters, but we could. We could change the URL mapping here, um, but let's look at the results of the tooling and we'll see how we can change it later as well in the configuration of our filter. On the next screen, the tooling is picked up because I chose filter from the menu. It's actually picked up that I'm implementing an interface, so I'm not given the option to um, override these methods. The skeletons uh, for these methods are going to be included in the code because I'm implementing an interface. I'm not extending a superclass. Finish, and up comes my very simple um, filter. I see stubbed out a zero arg constructor. I see a stub or a skeleton of the destroy method, the do filter method, and of particular interest to me here is in the do filter method, I receive from the container a request object a response object, and a chain object. And the skeleton code makes an automatic call on the chain object to call the doFilter method, passing along through the filter chain, passing the request object and the response object along. And the code helpfully tells me, this is where you place your code. Of course, that's always the uh, hardest part is deciding what logic you want to put into this filter. The logic for our filter being very simple just to prove that we're making this work the way we expect it to work is going to come right out of our sample code. So I'm going to copy and paste my very simple hello servlet. I will copy and paste that line from my sample code into um, my do filter method. Now I have a problem. The tool is telling me that I have a problem on uh, servlet context. Context cannot be resolved. And also a call on the filter uh, config object cannot be resolved. 
we're going to create a private um, object of type filter config. Oops, typo. Java is very case sensitive. Um, and we're going to call it filter config as we're expecting to use it in our code. Okay. In our init method, we're going to copy the local filter config into the class wide filter uh, config object by making a call to the Java this object, this dot, and the uh, Content assist is helping me out here. This dot filter config equals the passed in f config object from uh, the initialization. And notice the tool is helping me resolve these local and private variables by highlighting the references so that I can visually see right away that uh, this dot filter config refers to. Uh, the same highlighted reference on the first line as an instance variable of the class. To resolve the uh, servlet context issue, a quick um, execution of Control Shift O to organize my imports, and uh, that fixes that object right away. And the problem we have now on filter config is that filter config cannot be resolved. Uh, why? Does anyone know why? No, because none of you are paying attention. Um, no, I'm kidding. Because I have a typo um, in the naming of the variable. So I'm using the tool to help me resolve. See, it highlights it. Oh, now I know what you're doing, but this one's wrong. Um, so we'll fix the typo and resolve these errors and so that it behaves the way that I expect it to behave. Okay, so we provided some simple initialization by overriding the init method. We provided uh, one line, uh, actually two lines, um, in our do filter method to write out to the log simple text. The simple logging filter says hello. And then the primary call to the do filter method on the chain object is a signal to the application server to call the next filter in the chain. Or if none are uh, available in the list of applied filters, then call the actual resource that's being requested. Okay, so in order to map this filter to a particular resource, the mapping happens in the web XML or the deployment descriptor. And if I expand deployment descriptor in the Project Explorer uh, view, I see that, yes, I do have a new filter. Quick double click, it opens WebXML um, and scroll down, and I see the filter and the fil filter mapping elements as required for configuring filters to be applied in my application. Now, I'm not quite satisfied with how the filter mapping is going to work. According to the, what we see in the filter mapping element, the filter is only going to be applied to itself by URL pattern. So what I want to do is apply this simple filter to any resource that I'm requesting anywhere in the application any URL resource. So I'll use the wildcard asterisk to refer to any URL pattern within the application context. I modified that uh, uh, WebXML, just the URL pattern, a little bit. Now I'm ready to test this. I see the server has stopped, and it's in a state of needing to be republished. In testing s filters, we're not going to actually execute the filter code itself, what we're going to do is execute or make a request, a GET request, to any other resource within our application. So as my sanity check, I'll just uh, publish my server so I can see any uh, publishing activity separate from starting the server. And I'm watching the JBoss publish. That's fine. Server's still not running. So I'm going to pick any executable or requestable piece of Java code. In other words, uh, something that can be represented in a request response chain or 
act in a request response chain. And I'm going to execute that within my application. So I've got a simple servlet uh, with a do get method doing some stuff, blah, blah, blah. And notice no reference to the filter itself. This is what I want to execute. And what I should see injected into the behavior of my application, what I should see injected is the behavior of the filter. And all my filter is going to do is write out to the servlet context log. Okay, So let's test it. Let's see what happens. Right click on some requestable piece of servlet code or JSP code. Choose run as, run on server. And my original servlet, which was not touched, we didn't change anything in the original servlet code, the original servlet should behave as designed as it did before with the addition of the functionality of the filter code itself. So yes, my uh, request is executed. I also see written out to my server log the message Hello, because it's a tradition. We always have to do that when we're first testing applications. So here we saw how to create a simple filter, how to implement the interfaces, how to configure it to work in our application where it's actually intercepting and injecting um, behavior and functionality into our application without modifying the original Java source code.